So the Oriana uh, is a vessel, American built vessel built in Philadelphia, 1861, and wrecked nine months later, 1862, uh, as a federal troop transport during the American Civil War. And um, the really great thing about this site is again, the students are now seeing an American iron built ship from the 1860s, which is basically 10, 15 years earlier than the Stratheli. And um, in, in contrast to the Stratheli, the, the Oriental is a little bit shorter, but the debris is very, um, very intact, very, um, very much a, a debris field that's continuous. And so by seeing the Oriental, they can also get a better image of how the Stratheli has fallen, fallen apart. Um, they're also able to see a different kind of engine. It looks like the Oriental had, Oriental had a tandem compound engine um, that's still sticking up out of the water about 30 feet, um, whereas the Stratheli's got a disarticulated, um, broken up engine. And so they can contrast the different locations, the different construction with how the vessels actually fall into bits. Um, both vessels have intact propellers, but they're very different, very different designs, but they have the, a common propeller shaft arrangement. Um, and also in the case of the Oriental, we found the bow of the vessel. So we've gone and explored that and they've been able to see what the end of the Stratheli might have looked like. Um, and all the, all the time they can contrast the American ship construction technique with the British ship, ship construction technique, which shares certain, fe certain features, but also has certain um, differences, especially given the Oriental was a little earlier. My name is Saxon Bisbee. Um, I'm a Maritime Studies graduate student in the program of Maritime Studies at East Carolina University. Okay, well, standard operating procedure for recording something like this underwater is we each have our large slates that we take with us, and we have graph paper, which we overlay with mylar. So we work out a scale beforehand, and then we are each designated different sections to record. And the challenges with that are underwater, you're in a much more viscous medium than air. So your movements have to be a lot more coordinated just to hold a pencil the way you want it. Things like surge and currents, losing pencils is really easy, <laughs> things like that. Uh, today there was quite a bit of surge. Once you got up towards the surface, we were working on recording the engine. So that makes trying to stay in one place just to draw these things uh, pretty tricky. And you can end up being knocked in against things or you can end up down at the bottom and you have to get back to where you were, uh, problems like that. Um, but once we have it all together, we bring them back here, we take the mylars off and then we do the best we can to try to match them all up. And if we've done our job well enough, that it, that should be a pretty easy thing to do. As you can see here, these all line up pretty well. And then it's just a matter of putting a new larger mylar sheet, which we have already started to do, over top of these so we can trace it all onto one large drawing.